Welcome to Malcolm Reed's How to Barbecue Right, a podcast where we talk about barbecue, share recipes, and discuss all things delicious. And now, here's your host, Malcolm and Rochelle Reed. Hey, welcome back to the How to Barbecue Right podcast. I'm your host, Malcolm Reed, joined by my lovely and talented wife, Spunky as always. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Southern Shell. You aren't feeling spunky today? It's Friday. Oh, I ate a bad pepper. <clears throat> I got a bad pepper. <laughs> that ought to have you hopping then. <laughs> I don't so, know if it was to be more greedos or the bad pepper. I don't know. <laughs> Cinco de Mayo got you, huh? I'm blaming the pepper. Is that what we're talking about first today? The Cinco de Mayo recipes? The first thing I wanted to talk about today was Rimpy. Um, oh, yeah. Greg Rimpy. You did his show this week I on did. Cinco de Mayo. I did. On Cinco de Mayo. I mm-hmm. told him. If it hadn't been for quarantine, I probably would, would have not. been available. <laughs> that's the night I like to go to the Mexican restaurants. We, we had to do it at home, though. Yeah, we did. Uh, and we did, as a matter you of fact. A couple margaritas that was when, the, you, when you when interviewed I did the show. Yeah, you had a good I time. I started out with a few beers and had a couple really good margaritas. I got a margarita recipe we can talk about that's just the bomb. We will, we will. So yeah. every month you're on Rimpy. Yeah, first the first Tuesday. Of every single month, I do the Barbecue Central show. And usually, I'm the first guest. Like first, you know, first hour, Greg will come in, talk about what he's going to talk about, and he'll bring me on. Usually, about twelve minute mark of the first. You know, yeah, so the show gets going. Yep, and I do, I do a good segment with him. Usually, it's fifteen twenty minutes, and we we talk about all kinds of things. Yeah. I mean, usually, usually Greg comes up with some great ideas of what we're going to talk about, and I just roll with him. Um, you know, if there's something that that. You know, I think about it, I'll shoot him an email and say, hey, let's hit this or whatever. But most of the time, he's well prepared. Yeah, he has the best show going. Oh, it's, yeah, it's awesome. I mean, he had Sam the Cooking Guy on the same, same night. Yeah, and Darren Worth. And Darren Worth, <laughs> yeah. He so gets he all, gets the, all the big guests. Yeah, Steve Rockland does his show. Dr. Bob, yeah. you, Mason uh, Meatheads, regular on there. Yeah. I mean, all the – heck, he just – he, he did a – yeah, he did a, um, a special – what was it? Wednesday at like two central this week was where they were. Un- they unveiled the nine people that are going to be in the American Royal Hall of Fame. They're inducting nine. <clears throat> well, they only induct three, but they list nine oh. that they choose from. Okay. So they have. I, I listened to it. It was like I didn't know exactly how they did it, but what they do, they they take submissions, and then you get to like from a certain point, anybody can nominate whoever. They have like a selection process. They have a selection board. They go through the submissions and. Uh, Pick the nine finalists that are you know going to be up for it, and then they have then the selection committee committee goes. I think they vote for uh, past Hall of Famers get a big say in it some kind of way. That Who's going to be sense. inducted in yeah. with them? Yeah, so it's it's pretty cool. I didn't know all that. Uh, there's some big names on it though. It's oh yeah, I'm name. trying to pull up what it um, the nominations who for, who, they who are jumped off year. to me was Bill Arnold, Blues yep. Hog, uh, Joe Smoking Oklahoma Joe. Mm-hmm. Um, he, I can't remember his name. I just remember him talk, Greg talking about that. Joe Don Davidson. Yeah, Joe Don Davidson. Uh, Aaron Franklin's on it. Aaron Franklin. Meathead's on it. Meathead. Oh yeah, man, that's some hitters right John there. John Marcus. Um, and he, he's the guy that started the, the kind of the reality shows for barbecue. Yeah, I mean, he was a, he's like the, the TV the, producer. Yeah, yeah. He's been around barbecue. A big fan of barbecue for a long time. Yeah, too. Desiree Robinson. I'm not sure who that is. I'm looking it up. Um. Darren, Darren Ward. Oh, yeah. He, he should was, be in it for he's, sure. He's, if he's not, something's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Leanne yeah. Whippen was. Uh, Rodney Scott, Scott's Barbecue, I think. Is what his bar- I think, and then he a North Carolina guy. Hold on, I'm pulling it up. Um, I don't know. Leanne Whippen, um, Darren Worth. Uh, Darren should definitely be That's in automatic. It. Yeah. <laughs> Bill Arnold. Um, Bill should be automatic. Yeah. I mean, blues, think of competition barbecue without blues hawk sauce. Yeah. I mean, that's Desiree Robinson is a uh, cozy corner, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Memphis. Yeah. I didn't yeah. know that. I didn't know that name's familiar, but I know, I mean, the, man, Cornish Game Hen. That's what they're yep. famous for. Didn't it burn down? Yeah, but that's been years back. They've been They've since been it. finished back and open. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Rodney Scott has Rodney Scott's barbecue in Birmingham, Alabama. Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't. I thought it was over in Carolina for some reason. I don't know. I know the name though. Yeah, there's some good names on there. Oh but... yeah. <clears throat> um. So the so now they'll I guess they have a I don't know if it's another next month or when it's going to be but they'll make another announcement and, and Greg's going to have that live too. They'll top where they announce three. the top three. Yeah. yeah, he'll he'll have that. You can always catch it on 
barbecuecentralshow.com or Facebook or YouTube, probably too. He does it on all all platforms. So. Um, Very interesting stuff. Before we jump into anything, I really wanted to talk about Palmer Home real quick. We um, just to spread the word, Palmer Home is a local Mississippi organization, and they provide homes for uh, for fi- provide homes for children that don't necessarily have a good family life. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's kind of a foster foster kids program, but kind of they, it's not really an orphanage, but they place them with families. Like there's there's families that uh, volunteer to be Palmer home mom and dads. Yeah, and they actually live. They do in, have a campus. Yeah, yeah. And they do have some people living on campus and stuff. So. Mm-hmm. But they're a great organization. We're trying to help them raise some money right now because COVID nineteen has put a lot of their um, foster families out of work, and so. They, they're trying to help out as much mm-hmm. as possible. Um, so, you know, just keeping the lights on right now is what they're trying mm-hmm. to do. So check out Palmer Home. And if you, you know, have a little extra money. Yeah, help them out. Help right. them out. We're all trying um, to help out in these times. When... Yeah, yeah. Anyway, you can. Um, and you could just got to do the charity that you think is best and help out the way that you can help. And, you know, that's. It's important to us. Yeah. You know, it's important to us that's... to give back where we can and uh, help out. They do have the mud bug bash thing coming up here. They do. They if, had to you're change local, it up. if you're local, um, you can find out more information on mud bug bash, northern yeah. Mississippi area. Uh, you go to the possibly, Palmer Home. Yeah, help them out. Yeah, they have a Facebook page, Instagram, palmerhomeprobably.org or something like that. Yeah, and all their typical um, ways to raise money has kind of been put on hold because right. they do a lot of events. Events, and yeah. Stuff, we but, were going to do some, I mean, there's still some in the works. That we were going to do with them, but uh, we don't know now in the state of it. We had some stuff planned for the fall where it was going to be like a barbecue a, dinner and class. Yeah, kind of a dinner class thing with me. And I was going to, you know, we're going to do something special. That'd be something we'd sell tickets and donate to the Palmer mm-hmm. Home. And they've got several events in the fall. They've got like uh, sunflowers and skeet shoot or something like yeah. that. I don't know exactly <laughs> what it's called because I've never been a part of it. Um, how we found out about them just was because they were local yeah. and they were doing the uh, radio. They were asking for yes, donations for the radio, radio thon thon. years ago. Yep. And we started for Super Talk Mississippi. That's a big AM station here. And it's kind of a news talk thing. And I, I would go on there and talk barbecue with the uh, one JT show, uh, with Mr. JT himself. And he always helped support the Palmer Home. And so we started donating stuff and just got to know the organization. And it's really for a great cause. I mean, yeah. they, do, they do some great stuff. Uh, you know, helping helping with these kids and these families, so that's important. Yeah. Um. So I just wanted to mention that real yeah. quick. This week, you did poor man burn-ins. I did. And, Is that and, what you're calling them? No, I'm just calling them Chuck Roast burn-in, fake burn-ins. <laughs> 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 They're not poor man's. That's I mean, what I a Chuck Roast. A Chuck Roast is is probably just more expensive than a brisket. You just don't buy as much of it, but buy, pr- pound for pound. It's usually way more expensive than brisket. I don't yeah. know why they call it. I don't know how it got the name poor man's burn-ins. I don't know. I guess if you didn't want to buy a whole whole brisket and use the point that you could Maybe. just do. But, but what it is, it's kind of fake burn-ins, uh, beef burn-ins, you know. Yeah. Um. So. Most people smoke it whole. Most people, they'll cook a whole chuck roast, kind of season it like a brisket, take it up to 200 degrees internal, cube it, toss it in some sauce, and then put it back on there, just like we would if we were doing burn-ins for a competition or something. Well, I wanted to do it a little different to see how they would turn out by cubing them ahead of time. Um, a lot like I do with the, the pork belly or the, the bacon. I cube it up, season it to where the bark and the crust and all that goodness and the smoke develops all the way around it, not just from, you know, a whole roast. Yeah. And so pretty much all I did was season it with a, a little regular barbecue, the barbecue rub and a little bit of my TX just to get some texture differences going and, Put them on the drum, smoked them with some pecan wood for a couple hours. It didn't take long for just whenever the color got right. Yeah. Kind of set the bark was set. Put them in a pan with a little uh, two to one barbecue sauce and beef broth and covered them up and let it steam them, you know, let it break them down, yeah. render the fat. It was a real simple recipe. Yeah, it was super. I mean, it really wasn't a recipe. I was just <laughs> experimenting. So yeah. I, I was doing it to see what that final result would be like. If you took them out and you cooked them like that, would you? Would it be as good as a, as a burn in from a, a brisket point, or close, or close? Yeah, I would say it's in the ballpark. Um, I I would do them again. Yeah, is it as good as brisket point? 
nowhere close. No, not not a real good burnt not in. Not even. I mean, it's just different texture meat. Yeah. You know, the, the, the chuck roast isn't like brisket point. Yeah. It might look like it a little bit, and you can cube it up to make it fake look like it, but it's not the same texture because that point is better marbled. The chuck roast has some marble, but it's got a lot of lean muscles in it too. Mm-hmm. And the, the chuck roast, the way they cut them, it's probably made up of five or six different muscles in the roast. And so you get different kinds of textures of grain. Some of it will be marbled. The, the pieces, there was like one muscle in it that was really marbled yeah. up. And that was the closest part of those that chuck best. roast that was yes. close to a brisket. And those were really good. But it's not the same as cooking brisket. You're not going to fool anybody, I wouldn't think. Like, oh, here's Bernie. They might think you took a flat and did that and no. turned it into Bernie. And so, because I have you know, cube the flat before just to stretch some burn ends. And yeah. it had more of a texture of a flat cut up and cubed and smoked or, you know, than it did the point. Yeah. Cause it's, it's just hard to, to sub. There's no substitute for that fatty point. Well, you know, um, I just thought about this when we went to uh, certified Angus beef and was in their meat science lab, they talked about how the fat on a brisket is completely different than the fat on. Yeah. The and the other, and other part of the animals. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, that has to have, you know, an effect mm-hmm. on it. It does. I guarantee it. And also, do you think it would have been different if you would have cooked them the same way that everybody else was doing it? Mm, as I, far as the taste or texture? I think, the te- I think you get more smoke and more bar- more you season the way I do it. The way I did it. You flavor. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's more of a flavorful bite. Yeah. Um, I think cooking them in cubes speeds it up some. That's true. Because, I mean, this was only like a four-hour cook, and they probably could have come off a little bit earlier. Yeah. I mean, so, you know, some of the other pieces kind of dried out a little more than I wanted the them to. The smaller pieces the, Yeah. The fatty, the yeah. pieces that had the muscu- the intermuscular fat were perfect. Yeah. And the other leaner pieces kind of got a little more done, so the texture was a little chewier on those, even though it was done. If I was going to, if you were going to do it again, I would suggest not keeping them in the smoke as, as long. Yeah, so maybe step. like go an hour and 40, hour and a half, hour and 45. Maybe, yeah. Versus the full two hours in the smoke. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, I didn't probe them or anything. I was just going straight by color. I mean, yeah, and you were just experimenting. Experiment. Yeah. yeah, it was just total experiment. To see, what, I, I've never tried them. I wanted to see how they turned out that way. Yeah, and they were good. I mean, is it worth cubing it up just for burn ins? I think the chuck roast is better cooked and then shredded, I do too. and then making you know like pulled beef, pulled beef with it. Yeah, yeah. basically pulled beef, like your Mississippi po' boy recipe. Ooh. Yeah, and that's what you know. Ultimately, that's what I did with those burn ends that night because that was Cinco de Mayo. We took them after we got through finishing the video, and you put on some gloves and I just, just kind of shredded, shredded them, them and, and threw it in a ziploc bag. They stayed warm, and we made tacos with mm-hmm. them. And man, they were they were phenomenal. They like were that. really good because <laughs> it was all shredded up, you yeah. know. And they still had the they still had the barbecue flavor, so it wasn't like. Uh, Mexican style Mexican, flavor taco, yeah. but it was really good. Yeah, we threw a little cilantro, some pico, some cheese, and some guac, some guacamole in that there with it. it yeah. and that was it. it. Made a made a really good taco. It was very good. I had two of chuck them. Ro- beef chuck roast tacos are awesome. Yeah, they are. That's a good recipe. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, because I mean, I could do that and season it more with Mexican style. Use gringo and you know put some other stuff, other liquid in there when you cook it yeah. down, almost like beef cheeks. That's what it's close to. Yeah. It wasn't as good beef as the cheeks. cheeks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it wasn't as good as the beef cheeks. Um, beef cheeks, awesome. I didn't think you got as much out of it by cutting them up. Yield, like go, yeah, yeah, yield. It's hard to say because you know truck roast cooks down a lot. Yeah. So I mean, they do shrink some. So, but I don't know if it. It may not. I mean, no. Uh, if you waited, I bet it would be the same. I, I, I would say it probably lost twenty five percent weight. I had to guess just by kind of looking at it, knowing how much it was. Yeah, it's a three pound roast, and we ended up with a pretty good, you know, pretty good bag of yeah. pulled fake <laughs> truck roast burn ends. <laughs> I don't know why they get the poor, poor man's names. They're not really, they're not cheap. <laughs> well, if you were going to buy a truck roast or a brisket, yeah, versus total cost, total yeah. cost, yeah, but not by weight. But when you buy that brisket, you don't think. You know, you're paying mainly for flat. Yeah. And that's a totally different ball game. You're not going to keep that flat up like that. Um, Could. But. You didn't add any extra sugar to the braising liquid. And no. That was something a lot of people were doing. Yeah, a lot of people treat it kind of like, I mean, even when they do comp briskets, a lot of people will put butter and brown sugar and stuff in there with the point. I don't really like it. I don't yeah. like I'm not a fan of just super sweet. That's why I cut the, the barbecue sauce with the beef broth to kind of cut some of the sweetness out of it. I mean, it needs okay. a little... But you don't, to me, you don't really want your beef sweet. I don't, yeah. 
Just a, a little, yeah. Yeah, a touch to balance. The only time I really like beef sweet is when it's Asian style. It goes with it. I was going to say, you did yeah. some. Um, Those flanking, yep. flanking beef short ribs. They were good. When you, when you do the brown sugar and the, brown sugar and the and sauce and yeah. soy and all that good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you got a new cough button. Yeah, got me a new cough button. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's a. Uh, that's so the only time you, I think I like a little sweet on it. What did you think about the whole deal? Would you do them again? Yeah, yeah, I'd do them again. Really? I, I definitely do. I mean, if I just wanted to do some cubes, you know, yeah. I'd, more than likely I'd just do the chuck roast and shred it. That's better. Heck yeah. Like your Mississippi but, pot roast or just pulled yeah. beef. Well, what I did think about doing was, was doing those cubes and then putting them back in a sauce. I thought of this the other day. I was, making, I was, I was kind of doing my take on a ranchero sauce. Where it's like cubes, cubes of Mexican style ranchero. beef. It's like a sauce you'd serve over enchiladas or burritos oh, okay, or like something. A red sauce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a yeah it's, like a, yeah, it's kind of like an enchilada yeah. sauce, but it had chunks of that. I was like, man, these chunks. When, when doing that, it's like if you left them whole and chunky, and then cooked them down in that sauce, and then they would put over some cheese and onion enchiladas. It'd be really good. That would be good. It'd be really good. So I, I might, I might play around with that. Cuban one up, season it with grande gringo, smoking it down, get them tender, and then making the. Ranchero sauce with it. Um, so Maybe this like, kind of like beef tips or something. <laughs> Ooh, beef tips over <laughs> instead of over rice or yeah. over enchiladas. Um, you've been doing a lot of Mexican recipes here lately. I have because I haven't was... been able to go to my Mexican restaurant. I, we did get to go last night though because the restaurants here in our town have opened in Mississippi have opened back up with uh, limited seating, fifty percent occupancy, and. You know, servers and everything have to wear masks and you know the protective gear and all that. And honestly, I like the the fifty percent seating <laughs> because you sit at a table and nobody's around you. Yeah. You know, and nobody stops and talks. <laughs> you know, it's just go in there and eat, and your server comes and they don't bother you. They don't mess with you too much. Yeah. They just bring your stuff and get away. And it's like, man, this is all right. They can get used to dining like this. Yeah. <laughs> it's not crowded. <laughs> Because, you know, a lot of times you go in Mexican Mexican restaurants around here, and they're always jam-packed. I mean, people are Super packed. hovering over you, waiting for you to hurry up and eat so they can get the table. And and so having that relaxed atmosphere was nice. Yes. Um, and, man, I'm going to tell you, that hot plate, when I set it down last night, it was so good. <laughs> First time I sat down at a restaurant and I got a bad since bad. mid-March. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was, I was glad to go back. It's been... Early March, not even mid March. Yeah, it was spring break. Yeah, but we had an early spring break and we we traveled to uh, the butcher shop Mm -hmm. for spring break. It's been a long time. Yeah. Um, But this week you did the grilled pollo tapatillos. Pollo tapatillos. So I've learned it's not not polo. (laughs) 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 The gringo way is polo. But it's pronounced uh, pollo. You got called out on pollo. that. Pollo. I got called out a lot on that. I don't speak Spanish, you know. I mean, I never claimed to. I'm a green guy. <laughs> and I'm pretty grande. <laughs> but yeah, so it's this was a dish pollo. that I would that I ordered. It's probably it's one what of the best favorite? dishes they have at La Siesta on Commerce Street in Hernando, the beautiful city of Hernando. And it's called Pollo Tapatio. And what it is <laughs> <laughs> it's it, and I was told this is probably not a Mexican dish at all, even though they serve yeah. in a Mexican restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> but they take they take chicken breast cutlets, Filet. fillets. It's like if you think of a chicken breast, just cut in half, a it's, it's cr- long thin. ways, like not yeah. not across, but horizontally. So yeah. it's thin, and that's the same kind of style chicken they use when they do fajitas. They just cut it into strips and fry it up. Well, this they do the whole fillet. And they probably, in the restaurant, just grill it on a flat top. They mm-hmm. season it up, grill it on a flat top. But it's, it comes out serving in this skillet, like a fajita skillet. And it has mushrooms, uh, onion, cheese, and a bunch of little strips of bacon. So they take thin-cut bacon, and they cut it like into thirds or however long. It's yeah, just, you know, like a little inch-and-a-half, two-inch piece. It all curls up because they probably cook it on a flat top. Mm-hmm. And they do smother that, that in too. cheese, and they serve it with like tortilla shells and and guacamole salad, and you can get beans and rice too. So it's a heck of a meal. At <laughs> I mean, it's awesome. It's awesome. And so I said, I'm going to recreate it, and that's what we did for a delicious dinner. Um, and it was it, was it your went, Cinco de Mayo. Yeah, it was my, it was my dinner. Cinco de Mayo delicious dinner because we released it on that day. 
I didn't do the the. I could have just made those tacos and took some pictures of those, but we ate those. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, so I also did refried beans with it, mm-hmm. and I did sp- the Mexican style Spanish rice, whatever salsa you call rice. It, the salsa rice. Yeah. But I cooked this like so. I took my fillet, seasoned them with some grande gringo, kind of, and got my grill ready. I cooked it on the big green egg, no heat diverter, just direct grilling. <clears throat> I put my flat iron skillet on there, cooked my bacon first. Got it. It didn't take what five minutes, it maybe. Cooked up really but, yeah, good. Cooked on up the, really fast on the grill. Um, took took some of the bacon grease out because it rendered down some, but I left some there to cook the the mushrooms and the onions. And when I started them, I went ahead and laid the chicken breast on the grill beside the pan. And they are so thin, they cook in six seven minutes. Yeah. And so by the time the vegetables softened up and sauteed, you're not really trying to cook them to mush. You just want to you know saute yeah. them in that bacon fat. The chicken's done. I stack it over on top, put the bacon on there, smother it all in cheese, and shut the grill down, and just let it schmelt everything. <laughs> <They> schmelt. <laughs> it schmelted that For like cheese. Thirty seconds. Yeah, thirty minute. seconds to a minute. Whenever it's hot and bubbling, you pull it out, and that cheese is the kind of where it touched the skillet around the edges. That was the best part. Gets brown and kind of crispy, yeah. and then it's melty and bubbly, and it's schmelted all the way across. <laughs> and then you take that and serve it. And I served it family style. And I'd already had my. Uh, Beans going for the beans. See, the thing is, before you you got your grill, you were yeah. got your grill going, started lit the coals because it takes it 20 minutes, 20, yeah. 30 minutes. That's the perfect time to go cook rice and get your beans in the yeah. oven. Yeah. And that stuff's pretty much nothing to it. Yeah. It's simple. For the beans, uh, mash two, uh, drained and mashed two cans of just pinto beans. And then I seasoned them with a little Mexican hot sauce. I used Valentina and then some Grande Gringo. And then mixed all that up, put it in a little casserole dish, smothered it with cheese, <laughs> and then put it in the oven. And it took, what, 20 minutes, yep. 20, 30 minutes tops on like 350. To do the rice, the rice was really easy. I kind of put some olive oil in the pan and toasted the rice first, just kind of get it a little golden brown, get a little flavor on it. Then added wa- uh, two cups of water as I was cooking one cup of rice. Um, some salsa, just regular old jarred salt. No, I use, well, I use this. Restaurant style salsa from Kroger, yeah. but it comes you get it over in the, by the cheese section. Yeah, it's where it, <clears> you could use whatever. You can, I mean, the, heck, the Totinos <laughs> I love jar the Totinos. salsa. You can you can pour that in there, and then I put a little bit of chicken uh, chicken base. It's like a, you know chicken stock flavoring. To you could use a bouillon cube, and then just brought that to a bowl and cut it down and let it sit on low heat till I got everything grilled. You, you put a pinch of salt and pepper. In there. Yeah, you can season it with salt and pepper at the end. Yeah. It's real easy. Super easy rice. And it yeah. looks, it's just identical to what they cook in a restaurant. It's better. Yeah. It's really good. I have to say, I'm not a big fan of the rice and beans at Mexican restaurants. Never have been. It's just mushy and I don't like it. Um, your beans were killer. Yeah. They were really, really good. My it's- cheese to bean ratio was right. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's about. You know, in a restaurant, the beans, they the typical... It's like a runny refried bean, yeah. and I'm guessing they they add a lot of lard to it, and then they put a little bit of cheese over it, melt it on a hot plate, and put the rice there. It didn't have the same color. Yours yeah. had a much better color, too. I put the hot sauce and the seasoning to yeah. it. It's That's just true. not a plain bean. You know, a lot of times they're just plain beans mashed with some lard and cheese. Yeah. Got to season them. Got to season them a little bit. And the but, rice was really good, too. Yeah, the rice was real good. Yeah. Michael loved the beans and rice. and yeah. he, that's, you know, he usually don't eat rice, but he liked that. It was... An excellent dinner. Yeah. The, there was, you can't go wrong. Chicken, cheese, rice, bacon, mushrooms, onions. You can I mean, add beans. jalapenos. Yeah, you can add jalapenos to it, spice or you it can up. You really change You can up. change it if you want to add bell pepper, any kind of pepper mm-hmm. to it. It'd be like, it's it's kind of like, the mushroom. it's kind of like uh, chicken fajitas. If you think about making fajitas with onions and bell peppers and all this stuff and then and then leaving your chicken breast whole and you cutting it up yourself yeah. and, and then smothering, smothering it with, with cheese, cheese and bacon. bacon. <laughs> I mean, that's, if that doesn't, how if that, it how could it go wrong? What if you just put an egg on top of it? and <laughs> <laughs> Several people are like, this is not a Mexican dish, but it looks delicious. <laughs> hey, uh, La Siesta will beg to differ. I bet it's one of the number ones ordered yeah. <laughs> at the Goodman Road. I mean, the uh, Commerce Street branch anyway. Um, But it's very good. Yeah. They do another one that I really like too, and it's called uh, enchilada tapatillas, and it's like cheese and onion enchiladas, and they use the same chicken except they cut it up like with fajitas, fajita style little strips, and they put that in a sauce all over the cheese and onion enchiladas, and then put cheese over that and melt it. That's another one of my go tos. <laughs> so it's basically like those enchiladas I did the other day, just covered with that chicken and more cheese. <laughs> you pretty much anything you put cheese on and chicken, man. 
How can it be bad? What do you put the most cheese on? Yeah, is that's it, the dish I want. This is the one I want. Is it the cheese quesadilla? <laughs> yeah, shrimp and cheese quesadilla is good. Um, which we've started trying to grow our own herbs. We did start a herb garden. <laughs> <laughs> I put a picture on my Instagram. Yeah, this, this is that time of year, right? Yeah. So we had a basil plant that we've had all winter long, <laughs> um, beside the kitchen sink. You know, in the, over by the yeah, little window, so we get sunlight, and it's hung in there. I've been surprised. It's hung in there, but um, and I've used it several times. You know, yeah. chopped a little basil off and added it to uh, so, a tomato dish or something like that. Chell's mom, Miss Deborah, came to the house and she loves to do plants. So around our, you know, where my cooking area is out back, kind of the back patio, she always uh, comes in the spring and and does a lot of planting plants for us. And I was like, why don't we get some herbs while she's doing all that? So you ordered. Like a, it's like a three tiered trough system. <laughs> it kind of looks like a ladder, a, a, a step ladder of troughs. <laughs> what is it about four foot long? Maybe probably four foot long. It was like a hundred bucks from Tractor tra- Supply. Yeah, yeah, they delivered it to you and put it. To, yeah. We put it together. It and didn't then, take long to put together. Mm, got some potting soil and put in there and went to the little local nursery. And what did we buy? Um, Everything we bought every herb they had. Cilantro. Yeah, we got parsley, a lot of cilantro and parsley. Basil. Yeah. Rosemary. Mint. Chives, uh, dill. Yeah. Is that, am I leaving any out? Oh, did I say sure. parsley? I yeah, said we parsley. said parsley. Yeah, and that's it. Oh, sage. Sage, I don't yeah, know sage. Use the sage. I'll use the sage. It's good in sausage. It's good in dressing, <laughs> chicken it's and dressing. Good in sausage. It's good in all kinds of things. Um, I just want to see if we can keep it alive. <laughs> <laughs> I've gotten better. But it's, it's, it smells it's really better. good. I know yeah, I've walked out there and kind of eyeballed it to see how things are looking. They perked up and they're locking the sunshine and the, mm-hmm. and the dirt. And We've used the cilantro. I've already used some of it. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah in fact, that night when we'd made those chuck roast burning in tacos, we, I went out and pulled some cilantro off and finally chopped it up. Yeah. Um, it was good. Some of the stuff, I don't know how much mint we're going to be using, you know. Mint juleps. That's the only reason why I got the mint. Yeah. The mint ju- and it smells good. I love the way mint smells. I like to just touch it and then smell my fingers. My granny used to, she used to grow uh, mint, and she would go by it and just pull some leaves off and roll them up and chew on them. Yeah. I bet I thought, that would be good for you. Smelled good. I never tried it. But, yeah, I'm excited about our herb garden. Yeah. It's an, who knew? Yeah. We use a lot of parsley. We use a lot of cilantro. Michael said we're going to use the parsley for blind boxes. I said, I don't know if we got enough <laughs> parsley for that. <laughs> It'd take a bunch. Yeah, it would. I'm not sure. Like, when you clip it off, is it going to regrow right there? Yeah, you gotta, that's the I point. Mean, You're yeah. supposed to clip it off so it can regrow. Okay. Well, that's, that's the way I understand it. We might need to YouTube this. <laughs> yeah. I don't know anything about growing herbs, but we got herb garden. <laughs> we're going to figure it out. Yeah, so when I I don't have to buy herbs anymore. I bet. But I figured up as much <laughs> as much money as we spent on the three tiered trough system, that, the dirt, the herbs, and all that. It was like close to two hundred bucks. Yeah, I was like, you know how many of those little flat packs of <laughs> of, of herbs I can buy at Grugger for three or two hundred dollars? Heck, I could buy herbs for a year. Oh, and not Michael, have to take care of them. <laughs> and Michael uh, has a. He's got, he's got tomatoes and uh, jalapenos and pepperoncinis onion. and green onions and habaneros and watermelon. He's he, she, Michael and Nana planted a bunch of yeah. stuff out there. He's just excited to, about it. Excited if it lives. I would be too. So my plan is take some of his tomatoes or some of that basil and do some caprese. I'm salads. all about that. I, I mean, that's. I think that's how we ended up with that little basil plant that was by the it is. window. They they were out of basil, but they had a plant at Kroger and. So you bought the plant, and we used some of it and just kept it alive. Yeah. See, I did keep yeah, it alive. You did. You did. It's, it, it, that was back during the holidays when we were doing something with basil, and I'm sure it was a caprese yeah. little There's been several times you said, uh, little plant's looking pretty rough here, Shell. <laughs> 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 it's hung in there. I don't know how. <laughs> I sing to it. Is that what it is? <laughs> <laughs> so what do we have going on this weekend? We're doing. You tell me. We're doing some. Uh, we're doing cooking. a butt. We're cook. doing a, a butt cook, yeah, and that's what we're going to talk about today: <laughs> the butt uh, cooking a butt cooking butts cooking for a crowd cooking barbecue for two hundred. We've got two hundred people that. This is another and shout out to my buddy Chuck. He, he he's got a daughter that's graduating, and my other buddy Andy, his next door neighbor, has a daughter that's graduating. And as y'all know, graduations have been canceled for everybody. So 
Chuck got special permission from, I guess, the county or somewhere yeah. to, to help to hold an event on his house. On he's his got, yeah, property. he's got, he's got, you know, a pretty big farm there. And what are, what they're doing, they're setting this up tailgate style. He's he does a, a lot of stuff with the. He owns what's it, Coal Entertainment Services, mm-hmm. and what they do is they do all the lights, the rigging, and all you know anything audio, to bring, yeah, the audio, engineering. audio engineering, light engineering, all that for these big. Big shows, big productions like Memphis MMA, uh, you know, outdoor events, indoor events, the whole deal. So he's got access to all that stuff. So what he did is built a stage at his on his farm, hired all the guys, and they got the lights and stuff. And what they're spreading families out. So they they took like they could only he could only get approved for twenty, I think, mm-hmm. twenty or twenty two, uh, you know, Family. families. And they had to be spaced out so much. He had to get like rental toilets for each family, um, and we volunteered to cook for each family. So what we're doing. Is cooking butts, and every family is going to get like a barbecue set up where it's not going to be like you know it's take it buffet. take it to them. Yeah. It's not buffet; it's just them and their guests. So everybody's separated. Yeah, everybody kind of has their own table in their own little yeah. area. And they're going to do a special night for these seniors yeah. where it's kind of like it's not kind of like a graduation, I guess. He's doing a fireworks show too. He's got music. And oh, awesome! What they did was I think they submitted videos, and they're going to like play it on a video wall. And I don't know if they recorded like a speech for each one, if they're actually going to let them walk up there and talk, kind of spread out. It's going to be different. I mean, yeah, but it's not the same as a graduation, but at least they're getting something special yeah. that they'll remember. You know, heck, by the time we throw the barbecue in, the fireworks, all that. Heck yeah, that's a heck. Of a, that's better than what I had at, <laughs> at Northwest Coliseum. All, all we did was walk up there, three hundred of us, and shake yeah. somebody's hand, grab a diploma, that's and terrible. throw the yeah. Then hope you find the right hat to turn in there at the end. <laughs> Um, you throw them, but that's a. But so each, so each family we, is getting kind of a, a setup. So a barbecue setup. Yeah, they're getting plates, napkins, forks, all individually wrapped for ten people. Yeah. So we're cooking. There was twenty two families, and I figured there would be some you know some of his volunteers that he's got working there. I'd feed them too. So we bought thirty butts, and I had Jamie, uh, Jamie Williams, go by TK's. Raymond's Meat Market in Memphis because I pre-ordered the butts from him and, and I bought I had about thirty of them. Well, real quick, they're saying there's a pork short, shortage. Yes, we're not seeing it yet. Yeah, our grocery stores are. I mean, there's just like everywhere else. Some stuff's missing. They they have some, but nobody knows for sure. I've heard various. I've heard different people say there is no shortage. Me too. That this is all you know constructed because yeah, yeah. they want to drive the prices up and you are seeing prices going up. I'm seeing butchers now saying, Hey, our food service guy saying, man, they're telling us our prices are going up a dollar 50 a pound or something like that. So that's I mean, crazy. it's prices the increase is definitely coming, but I don't know if that's what's causing demand or what, who yeah. knows, who knows, but, but TK had plenty. Yeah. Well, he had, he had bought up. I'm, I'm sure he had bought up some for the comp season mm-hmm. because they, he sells. He's a big pork. comp supplier. Yeah, they, they barbecue. around and people aren't buying them. You know, he he puts in a big order to get his prices right. So he said he had plenty, and so I said, "Well, can you spare 30? He's like, "Yeah, come get them next week. I'll you know, have them ready." And so Jamie went and picked those up. They're going man to cook for just say 200 people. Um, I would normally figure that you're going to need about. One butt feeds about 15 people. That's how I usually figure it. 10 to, you know, 12 to 15. So I was like, well, I'm at least going to do, you know, that's perfect size. We got 10 people. So yeah. I at least needed 22. But then I said, I don't know how many people is going to have their volunteering. So I want to make sure. So we said, we're going to do 30. And to do 30 butts is a big undertaking. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not something somebody's going to do on their pellet grill. Yeah. You know, you've got to, the first thing you got to do is know, you know, you got to have the equipment. You got to have the equipment to do it. Yeah. And I've got an old hickory that's like a rotisserie. It'll actually hold like 86 butts, something yeah, like that. It's full. A, I've got 100 on it, but 96 before stacked. <laughs> what do you but, mean uh, stacked? Like turned on their ends oh, where you okay, can turn okay. them sideways and get more on the rack. Oh. But 30 won't be bad at all. Yeah. So what we'll do is, and Jamie's probably already starting on this. We'll get them like we'll get our table set up, covered with table covers. And the the hardest part about it to me is getting all the butts out of the package and getting them seasoned and on the pit. Once you get that part done, there's nothing to it. Yeah, you just have to watch them. So we'll bust all the get all the butts out of the coolers. You know, let them come up to room temp a little bit, about an hour. Bust them out of the packs. Wipe it all down. Try to dry up as much of the juice that comes out of the packs. Season them up and. Uh, Usually if I'm doing a large cook like that, it'll probably take five to seven pounds of seasoning. 
is what is what I'd be estimating for this one. And you usually do a combo, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Combo. Usually I do. Usually I use yeah. some yeah, it's a combo. Uh, a lot of times I have just whatever's on hand that I want to get rid of. I'll make one <laughs> one Frankenstein rub. You know, just throw everything in there, mad scientist style. Start it up and run them, and those turn out. So, I mean, sometimes they turn out like just amazing, and you're like, "Man, I wish I could duplicate that." But I put all this stuff in it, so yeah. who knows? You know, but but this time we're just using a little bit of the barbecue rub, and hot rub, just mixed, and they'll get. We don't rub them with mustard or anything when we do the big cooks. Just go straight rub, let it sit a while, and fire up the cooker. So if you if you got a, a smoker that'll handle it, all you have to do is figure out how to keep the temp steady. And on the old hickory, we'll start off with some charcoal. Uh, use the gas to start it. We'll fill the fire basket up with charcoal, start burning logs too, and that'll give us plenty of heat. And it's going to take them 12 hours. You know, we'll, we'll, you we'll turn it low. These. We don't wrap them. We usually turn the grill on about 225 on the old hickory and just let it go. And we know that. And you know, it's rotisserie. It's rotisserie the whole time. They're self basting themselves by going around in a big carousel circle and dripping on each other. It smells so good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And then all you got to do is make sure you don't lose power. You know, um, it does have gas assist where you don't have to keep it loaded with charcoal. You want that charcoal and smoke on them at least till they get to like 165 internal. And then at that point, you just want the heat. So, I mean, sometimes we'll throw more coals in there. We we quit putting the wood in once we see the internals come up. And usually that's about halfway, about six hours in. You don't need any more wood. And You could get it overly smoked. Yeah, you don't want to get them overly smoked. We, We load them up fat side up. So the fat's kind of dripping down on them, and they just they cook better like that. They're easier to take on and off the pit. If you if you put them on their fat side down, a lot of times that fat cap will melt if you don't mm-hmm. wrap them, and then it just sticks to your grate. It comes off, and the butts start tearing apart. Yeah. But if you'll flip, if you'll orient the butts where the fat's up while they're on their on the rotisserie, or even if they're on a fixed shelf grill, that you don't have to worry about it sticking. And then that way we can go back in there with gloves on, a little pizza, a hand pizza peel. Yeah. Not the big long one, but the hand one. You slide it right under and lift them out and put a them right. A butchula. A butchula, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, there's one called that. <laughs> Traeger's and, got one called that. Yeah, that, that's exactly right, though. Yeah. Uh, I've got a cheap aluminum one that is, like, made it's for pizza. It's a small pizza. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But it works great, too. Yep, you can find them at restaurants, yep. supply stores. So after 12 hours, usually we're going to hold them a little bit because I like I like them to calm down. When you and say hold them, are you holding them in a cooler, or are you just kind of cooling that? No. Uh, now, there's the those pits are set. You can drop the tip down to 140, and it'll actually sit there and hold it. So it's like almost a, like becomes a proof. Yeah, kind of, kind of. But I don't, I'm not using it for that. Yeah. I'd rather stick them in my big grizzly cooler. So we'll put them in pans at that point and cover them in foil and then set them inside the grizzly cooler and kind of burp it every so often. But they'll probably sit in there two hours before we start pulling them. So – if our event, we need to be there like I told Chuck we'd have to meet there around four thirty. We'll probably start pulling them at two thirty ish or something like that, or start getting ready to. Yeah. And so they're ho- hopefully they'll go on. Jamie will put them on about eleven. They'll be done about eleven, twelve. That's twelve, thirteen hours. Take them off, let them rest a couple hours. Two o'clock, we could start packaging them up because we've got to glove up, wear protective gear, mm-hmm. break everything down. We shred them by hand. That way we can pick out anything that's, you know, if there's anything that didn't render down. I like to give real good meat, bold. Yeah. We do it, it very similar to what how you did it in your video. Yeah, you exactly like board. that. Just simple, just it's it simple out. pulled pork. Yeah. Muscle it out. Yep. Remove anything that's just. Sometimes yuck. I like to mix a little bit more vinegar sauce and a touch of AP mm-hmm. with it just to flavor that meat more because we didn't inject it or anything. But it's simple pulled pork. We pack it back down in an aluminum pan and put a lid on it and stick it back in that warm cooler, and it's good to go for another couple hours. Mm-hmm. So we'll take it and deliver it and let, the, let a family member come by and pick it up and then be off to that. Yeah. We're serving it with uh, beans that we got to cook tomorrow too. Yes. Um, we're going to cook those on the uh, CTO. Yeah. Um, and then we're serving it coleslaw. Gotta make. So what's, what's your plan with the beans? Well, I'll uh, tell you my plan with the beans. <laughs> the beans are going to be simple. They're just they barbecue baked beans. I bought They're... some bulk barbecue sauce. We probably had some cattlemen's from leftover. From Memphis yeah. Bay. So um, we'll probably just, uh, I, I buy the bushes. Cattlemen's makes the best what beans. What is it, the number 10 can? Or was it, it's called a number 5 can or it's number like 10? Five, yeah. Yeah. It's like a gallon of beans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the big can from Sam's, Bush's baked beans. I have used just the showboat pork and beans, but. I like to use the barbecue baked beans because they're already somewhat seasoned in a sauce. I drain, drain them. them. 
add some brown sugar, a little bit of mustard, a little bit of barbecue sauce. And I usually don't use expensive barbecue sauce. I usually use something that I get cheap either at Sam's or having from Cattleman's or something like Cattleman's that. Cattleman's and Sweet Baby Ray's is some of the yeah, best cheap, bean I mean, barbecue sauce. They make delicious sauce. beans. They do. I season them with some barbecue rub, yep. but I don't usually put my own barbecue sauce when I'm making massive amounts of beans just mm-hmm. because it's exp- it makes the cost go up. Yeah. You know? And not only that, I just think it makes a better bean. Yeah, yeah. Because our sauce, you know, the sauces, the more expensive sauces, more like glazes anyway. Yeah. It goes better over meat and making yeah. it pretty and all that. Beans, you're just trying to get some old school barbecue flavor in it. Exactly. And so we'll put those on the pit. They only need a couple of hours. Mm-hmm. But smoke we actually them. smoke them on yeah, the pit. Yeah, they actually yeah. smoke. And we'll pan those up. And while that's going, we'll mix our coleslaw up. So you want me to tell you my coleslaw recipe? Heck yeah. Coleslaw for 200. What's the recipe? Well, How much coleslaw? coleslaw? We bought nine big cans of beans. That's going to be a lot of beans. <laughs> How much coleslaw did you buy for 200 people? Well, see, I have a little trick. Um, anytime we're doing a catering job or um, serving. A massive amount of coleslaw. A, yeah, a big amount of coleslaw. Memphis MA, we do this. Um, I take a big bag, usually um, – we use meat. We've been using the meat bags now. Yeah. Um. But you can get a like the two and a half gallon Ziploc bags work perfect. Um. I put in two two pound bags of the dry coleslaw. So four pound four pounds of shredded up cabbage. Yes. Four pounds of shredded up cabbage. They come in two pound bags at Sam's. Yep. And then I get one five pound tub of the pre made coleslaw. Like out of the refrigerated section. Yep. Out of the Sal- refrigerated yeah. sections, right by the pasta salads and the potato salads at Sam's and two uh it's about a two ounce packet of coleslaw seasoning mm-hmm, mm-hmm. the it's a concord brand fresh success is the name of it coleslaw so it's like a dry mix it is it's almost like a ranch packet yeah, yeah yeah but it's coleslaw yeah so it's two dry bags one wet tub, uh, tub that's your mayo no bags. more no more extra mayo or anything that's all it needs nope. i usually it layer it in there i put bag of cabbage a packet of slaw mix, dump my five pounds of uh, wet. Pre-made wet slaw. Yep. Put my dry mix, put the other bag of dry mix on top, put another uh, packet of the slaw mix, close it up, throw it in the fridge, give it about an hour, come back, shake it up a little bit. Throw work it, back work in, it all around. Yeah, work it all around. Throw it back in the fridge another hour, shake it up and serve it. And it, you get more compliments on that coleslaw, like, <laughs> wanting that coleslaw <laughs> recipe. And it's a total cheat recipe. Yes. I mean, it's the easiest Coleslaw. We learned to make that because when we were cooking for big crowds, and we talk about trying to shred up cabbage or mix up all the, you know, buy the big thing of mayo, or you can add all the stuff. And it's so much easier that way, and it well, tastes we were really the, good. The tub from Sam's. It was yeah. a five pound tub from Sam's, and we were like, it's so runny. Yeah, it's too it's too much sauce. It takes. I mean, uh, so runny. Yeah, so ratios I, are off. Yeah, the that. ratios are off. So I said, <laughs> let me try adding it with. Some dry, um, just dry. to just to soak up some of the some of the extra sauce. Huh? And I was like, oh, it's so it, that uh, that made it better. I, and I was like, but it's still a little too runny. So I added another bag, and it was perfect. And needed said, some more seasoning, so I added the, the, the coleslaw. Oh, the coleslaw, <laughs> and then there you go. You don't have to buy any sugar, mayonnaise, nope, no mixing. It's just all in a bag, dump and go. A little bit of time in the fridge, and you've got enough coleslaw to feed an army. Yeah. So we're gonna do twelve bags of dry. Yes. So that's 24 pounds of shredded up cabbage slaw. Yes. And then we've got five, no, six tubs, six 30 pounds of the wet. Yes. Already pre mixed. <laughs> and then we've got a dozen of the coleslaw packets. Yep. And that'll make six batches. Yes. And that ought to be enough to feed two. <laughs> if I don't feed 200, something would be wrong. <laughs> that's a lot of cabbage. That's a lot of slaw. That's a lot of slaw. You can also add a. Um, that's, that's 50 pounds seed, of the coleslaw. celery seed. Yeah. How many pounds of coleslaw? 50. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> I hope we have room in the refrigerator. You can also add the celery seed or a little extra salt or Season pepper. Or you can kick that up you however you it. want. If yeah. you wanted to add, you know, other stuff to it, you could. Uh, don't need any more mayo. I mean, the sauce part's mm-hmm. right. It's you, all. You do have to let it sit. Yeah. To, because, you know, it all kind of has to. So could you take, uh, how do you think it would be if I took a bag of apples and shredded them up and mixed it there with it, made an apple slaw with I it? I think it'd be great. Good. My mom. Give it a different texture, wouldn't it? Yeah. My mom, you know, like you said, came and stayed with us and she loved your apple slaw. Yeah. It was she good. thought it was great. It was really good. That apple coleslaw mm-hmm. you did. Um, so when you uh, are cooking a big butt cook, whether it's for a fundraiser, a catering job or whatever, um, what do you need? Aside the, the, from the equipment. 
Well, you have to have a cooker that can handle. Yeah, that's it. the number one thing. You're, you're gonna. It takes all the fight out of it to have a, a cooker that are big enough to hold what you're cooking, and you don't want to max it out. Yeah. Ultimately, you need a little more cooker than you have meat to put on it because why? Well, because it slows things down. Air doesn't move as much, and you know it just cook takes it, it longer. Yeah. So, so on mine, like I said, it'll hold ninety. It'll hold eighty four easy. You can get ninety six on it, but we're cooking thirty, which is a perfect load. It's easily manageable. It's not going to take too long to season them and get them loaded. Yeah, you don't even They're need that have much. Plenty of room. Yeah, you don't. You don't. I mean, one person really could do it. Yeah. I mean, to do thirty. I mean. You need the help. The help comes in on taking off. That's usually where you need some extra hands when they get done or putting them on, taking them off. That's the only job. That's the only hard job. But um, you know, other stuff you need that you don't think about is you got to have pans. You got to have the full. You got to have the serving stuff, and, and that's all things that people, a lot of people don't think about. We had to buy buns. I mean, we bought twenty two packs of sixteen count buns. That's a lot of that gum bread that <laughs> thrown around. You know. Yeah. You definitely need the coolers. and Yeah, you got to have some big coolers to hold things in. You got to keep that slaw cold once you get it mixed. Bars, you got to yeah. keep those beans warm. You got to keep that meat warm. So you got to think about those things that you need to to do it. Now, you can use your grill. You can tone it down and use it as a hot box, kind of like we were mm-hmm. talking about, turning it down to like 140, holding it in that safe zone. And all it, all it really amounts to is killing your fire except for a little bit of heat and leaving the door shut, you know, watching it. Now, I do suggest having – a uh, good thermometer. You need a good thermometer on the pit. You need, you know, it's, it even doesn't hurt to have one at rack level. You can clip a probe wire to it to, so you can watch your internal temp in there, or you can buy the cheap oven thermometers and set on the yeah. rack. Um, I always use a thermopan to make sure they're done to verify them because we want them 200 degrees so they pull real easy internal. But usually by the time you cooked them 12 hours, they just want to fall <laughs> apart. It's taking them off, and they want to jump apart for you, and they're juicy and delicious. They are. They're so good yeah. on that big old hickory pit, just rotisserating. Oh, man, they are. And I don't think it, you miss the injections and the wraps. No, it's uh, just good eating pulled pork, yeah. you know. It's it very really old is. school. Um, and we're serving it with uh, uh, both barbecue sauces, like yeah. a bottle of regular sauce, a bottle of vinegar. I like the vinegar sauce on it. I, like the, I like the tanginess. I think it, it's, it's a little bit thinner sauce. and has a little bit of heat to it. A little bit sweet to balance it out, but it's really good on pork. Um, there was an instance where we had a buddy that was doing a butt cook, and it was a pretty substantial butt cook on an old hickory, I believe. And uh, I think the racks came off, <laughs> or they tilted. Oh, on the big one, yeah. yeah and all oh, the man. and all the butts. He went to check on it in the middle they were of the night. Dumped in the bottom of the. <laughs> that's the one thing you got to worry about. Then when you're loading a bunch of them, especially on an old hickory or any kind of rotisserie pit, there's a certain way you have to load them to balance those racks because the racks are just kind of hanging on there, mm-hmm. teeter-tottering a little bit. And, you know, and they got right. to, I guess. So if you, yeah, to move around. Yeah. If, so if you don't put them on there just right, you can, you know, get the weight countered off and it'll dump everything. And once one dumps, it makes them all dump. <laughs> so you have to watch it. I think that cooker actually had a malfunction, like, Something a broke, well broke. broke in it and dumped them all. And yeah. Man, that was a, it know. wasn't his fault. It was yeah, a, yeah. an issue. You never know what's going to happen. But he went there and all his butts were in the bottom of that cooker. What did he do? I don't remember. He wrapped them. He, he took them out and wrapped them. He, he salvaged most yeah, of them. Yeah. He said it was amazing, but he was able to salvage <laughs> some of them. Oh. I've, had, <laughs> I've had a problem with that with some turkeys. <laughs> I don't know what happened. The wood was bad or something. Turned some turkeys jet black. <laughs> it was like I was like, man, were, I've had the worst, you know, worst luck on old hickory with some turkey sometimes. Because I tried to do that whole turkey on a beer can, it turned a jet bike one time. Oh yeah, that's I don't right. know what happened. I could, but it turns like when you wash them off, it's the only option you got. Let's get that black stuff off of them. <laughs> turns them into like calico turkey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you. Oh. There's just I had to get out of that game, the yeah. fundraising <laughs> game. Stories to be told there. Whew. It's just the the weight of knowing that you're cooking all this for other people, you know. It's yeah, like, that's a lot of pressure, to, man. Yeah. I would want to do that for a living. No way. And you gotta. Or you can you imagine it's always pressure. Yeah. Like that? I would just be mortified if somebody got sick or anything. I mean, yeah. Did something happen? Your cooker malfunctioned, and all the meat went bad, or yeah. something. And you've already sold it. You got to deliver. What do you do? I don't know. I mean, that's what. That's something to think about. Me. Yeah. When y'all you used to do it without having the right equipment. <laughs> oh yeah. There's been times <laughs> where we scrambled and just whatever pit we could go, we'd run 
six or seven barbecue pits just to try to do, do the load. You were trying to raise money for your barbecue. Team. Yeah, that's yeah. how that's how we got money to cook on. Yeah. We would do butt sales to friends and family. Everybody that was on the team would sell two or three butts to somebody they knew, you know, and and then we'd take that money and go buy a bunch of butts and cook them for them. And, and nothing ever went wrong, luckily. We had some times doing it, man. Because you'd sell the butt for like 25, 30 bucks or yeah, something like that. Yeah. And it'd cost you, what, 10? 10, 10, 15 bucks. Of. You had it tied up. So you made about 10 bucks a butt, something yeah. like that. Back in the day, I don't know what you could do it for now. I don't know. I bet you people are selling for 40 now. They'd have to. Because it costs so much more, yeah. you know, things that go into it. They'd have to. Inflation. <laughs> but yeah, we did a bunch of those back in the day. We'd mm-hmm. do one at least three or four a year, you yeah. know, to, to, to build up coffers for the contest. Yeah, because that's how we paid entry fees yep, and yep. bought meat and everything. Had to stock the bar at the contest. <laughs> had, to. had to have a full stock bar. <laughs> Can't barbecue without, without some punch or something. Oh, 20 kegs. To cook. <laughs> About 20 kegs. <laughs> We had crawfish parties too. Yeah. That's why we did those. To raise money. The old Killer Hogs crawfish hey, party. The crawfish, the crawfish parties would make a couple grand. Yeah, they were they good. Were they, were, they were successful events. We did a lot of Memphis and Mays off crawfish. Yeah, picks. yeah. We always did them in the spring and used the money for Memphis and May. Because it's expensive. Yeah. Um. Any other advice for anybody interested in doing? Pulled pork well, for two hundred. Well, the biggest <laughs> thing, the, the biggest thing is, no, get your equipment. Then know what you're going to do with the meat. How you're going to keep stuff hot and keep stuff cool. Once you got that part, it's done. I mean, stay with it. Don't you know? You got to give yourself plenty of time and know that you can hold. Because if you, there's nothing worse than trying to have an event wait. You know that you've got yeah, a hard yeah. time on that you didn't get the meat ready in time. And it takes longer. The, the more, more, the bigger numbers you add to cook, the more time it's going to take. Always. It's from handling time, cook time, breakdown time, the whole thing. So it's going to increase it. So I always give myself plenty of time. And then just use good food safety guidelines. You know, check. That's the best That's the best way yeah. to do it. So what do we have coming up after the cook? Um, I've got a hug. TK said he had a whole hog. So I'm going to cook a whole hog next week. What weight? Uh, it's like 150. Yeah, I think so. 100, 100, I think so. I think he said some, maybe 135. It's right in there. Yeah. I was like, perfect. That sounds good. I, I was just glad to hear he had a hog. Yeah. So, 150 pound hog. Oh, so we're cooking that Thursday, yeah. Friday, uh, Saturday? One day, probably next weekend. It'll yeah. be, I don't know. I'm trying to shoot a video of it. Oh, definitely. Running style hog. We'll see how it turns out. Get Martin, Martin, Jamie involved, and we're going to have a good time cooking a hog. At the house? Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot of. Get out the old hog trailer. The old, old? Yeah. You got to knock them cobwebs off. No, it's, it's good to go. <laughs> Jamie, yeah, Jamie's been keeping it tip-top running shape. New tires on the trailer and cleaned and everything. Really? Dude, yeah. That's good to hear. I don't no know. raccoons if, living in there? No <laughs> raccoons that I know of. I hadn't, I hadn't been over there and opened it. But I don't know. If, I haven't got a delicious dinner planned this week. I might take a week off. Yeah, I don't think we're going to do a delicious dinner this week because of the hog. Cook. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Are you going to do a, a recipe? Rain. Probably do something. Yeah, I don't know any what it's ideas? Yet. Um, you were going to do your uh, patty melt. Yeah, I had talked about that, and then I realized Jay just did a patty melt video not about a week or so mojo. ago. That got mojo. And I was like, man, I can't do one back-to-back with Jay. on Because this patty melt looked good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, what, what if I can't do it as good as him? <laughs> so, so I'm rethinking my patty melt. But uh, I do have a pulled pork recipe. Not pulled pork. I don't know what I was thinking. Pulled pork. Uh, it's a uh, like a pork pork chop recipe that was served with apples and onions. Ooh. And so I may do that this week for a, a video. Wait. But I may do it with a with the loin. And so I got some, I got I got some thick cut chops in there, and I've got a center cut loin. So that all came from the butcher shop. Yeah, yeah. I don't know which one I'm gonna do, but one of those I'm probably gonna do. That sounds good. And that'll be, it'll kind of be, I might do it for dinner, but it's not going to be a delicious dinner because it's going to be the, the, the main full recipe. recipe yeah. yeah. Do it with some, I don't know, mashed potatoes and Brussels sprouts or something like that. Okay. Something. something I don't know. It sounds like a good idea to me. I love mashed potatoes. I hadn't really thought about sprouts. it because I was, I've you know, been a kind of busy. <laughs> 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 I hadn't thought ahead the next week yet. 
<laughs> I'm trying. I'm just trying to get through this week. I'm, I'm looking forward to when we hang up this podcast. Did you I'm have a bad pepper last night too? No. <laughs> <laughs> I had plenty of margaritas. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a radio show to do this afternoon on Super Talk. I'm going to talk to those guys. Talk to them about, uh, you know, Memorial Day is yeah. right around the corner. It doesn't Won't feel be long. like it. Yeah, yeah. Man. Especially with it being cold. Yeah. Next sure weekend is. would be Memphis to May. Hey, I did look ahead at the weather. We're fixing to start hitting some 80 day, 81s, 82 stretch for a while. So. We might have Warm to, weather's finally coming. We might have to take some time off and just float around the pool for a day or two. <laughs> that sounds good to me. Um, Mother's Day is this weekend. Yes, it is. What would you Happy recommend? Mother's Day to my mom and happy Mother's Day to my mother in law, uh, Donna and Deborah. What about anybody else? And happy Mother's Day to <laughs> Shell, the, mo- <laughs> the most beautiful mother. Uh, he always says, <laughs> You're not my mother. I don't think of you as the mom. That's supposed to be my job. That's okay. I'm okay with that. <laughs> this will be the first year that I actually am not. We don't have to load in or yeah, set up Memphis in May. Can I'm not you believe it? Be filthy and you might get to sleep in. Oh. We might have to go get some, you know, make breakfast in bed for you or something. I don't get the breakfast in bed. Breakfast in the living room. I don't want to. Yeah, <laughs> in front of the TV. <laughs> yeah, there you go. With your coffee and you know, what would you like to have? Some donuts or oh, like donut. make breakfast? Mm. I can make biscuits or. You know, I'm not that big of a breakfast person. I pre- so you like donuts and colaches? Yeah. I haven't had a, a donut in a while. Okay. Well, we'll see. We'll see what Michael can come up with. He's it's, limited how far he can ride a scooter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he can ride the scooter to the donut shop. You're, that. On your, you're on your own, on your here, own. kid. <laughs> I got it's, my mama a whole ribeye for Mother's Day. Yeah, she liked that too. Yeah, I always give her something she can use. <laughs> Heck with some flowers. Who wants a ribeye steak? <laughs> I know. <what> I <laughs> Do they have it on sale or something? What no, you... I bought a certified Angus beef whole ribeye loin. Dang, yeah. I bet that's going to be good. I told her it was. It looked good. <laughs> it looked good. That's a heck of a gift. Super low had them. What would you recommend anybody cook for their mothers or wives? Mm. Mother's Day. Any suggestions? You know their favorite meal. It's hard to say what somebody's favorite yeah. meal is. Uh, everybody does like everybody, steaks yeah. for dad, but yeah, what I mean, do you do I don't know. Usually, you just leave them alone. <laughs> cook for yourself, and don't make them have to cook anything. And that's my only really requirement. <laughs> I just don't want to have to cook on Sunday. I don't know. For mothers, you know, moms like barbecue too. Ribs wouldn't be a bad idea. Yeah. Ask her her favorite. I rib. love she a like good a, steak. Yeah, yeah, steak or shrimp or something. Um. I did uh, kind of get tickled. Some Several people have made the comment, when you do your delicious dinners, you say, it's my night to cook. So and they'll say, isn't every night your night to cook? Like, no. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Normally, Shell cooks dinner. Yeah, you usually cook one. Usually. Yeah, I usually week. do. I usually do one a week. You get, yeah. well, because of weekends, free for all. Yeah, and usually we do I'm, a lot usually, of yeah. weekends. Usually I'm cooking during the day. We don't really have dinner. Yeah. I mean, you kind of eat, you know, lunch or late afternoon or whatever. Yeah. You don't really have dinner on weekends. You do a lot of... And then Sundays, usually Sunday after church lunch or something. Yeah, so it's you not do like, a lot of um, testing and tuning Yeah, on stuff the weekends. like that. And usually I might have a few beers, so I don't really want dinner. Yeah. <laughs> Just pick up something <laughs> <up> late. <laughs> but uh, one night through the week, it's usually my night to cook. Yeah. And so, and that's how I come up with a delicious dinner idea. Because mine are always delicious. They are. You're pretty good. You just like getting them done. Let's just get dinner over with, the dishes put up, and the kid to bed, and that way you can relax. Mine is more of an art. Yeah, I got the art for it, you know? <laughs> if I can only do it one time a week, I could do that. If I had to do it every night, I'd just throw something out there, too. All right, tonight <laughs> it's Viennese and crackers. Here you go. <laughs> All right, opened up some SpaghettiOs. <laughs> it was your night to cook last night, and that's how we ended up at the Mexican restaurant. <laughs> I, I, had didn't every, have it in I had everything there. <laughs> you had the meat laid out. This is what I was going to cook. I said, nope. I said, How do, let's go out. We can go out now. <laughs> and Governor we, Tate has okayed at 50% occupancy of restaurants. I'm for supporting my local economy. Tater says it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> but, well, that's all we have this week. All right. Well, hey, I appreciate y'all hanging out with us, and uh, we'll do it again next week, Shell. Yeah. If you'd like to connect with Malcolm, it's How to BBQ Right on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and of course YouTube. If you'd like to connect with me, it's Miss Southern Shell on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, we'll see y'all next week. Let's do it again.